Real Honorable Jerry Byrne and uh, Dr. Susan Dyer, Dyer Knight, Ms. Iris Patton, uh, Chair of the Board, and of course, Dr. Golfman, esteemed co-chairs, uh, uh, and my dear wife. Um, just on the legal side, let me just start off by saying that um, we're okay. We've trademarked the building healthy tomorrow. We have worldwide rights to it. There is one small city called Singapore that uses it, but they actually didn't trademark it. So we're, we're ahead of them legally there, John. We're, we're okay. And uh, Noreen, thank you for those embarrassingly uh, positive comments. Uh, I must admit I haven't accomplished anything on my own. I have a great team of people working here with tremendous support from alumni, from faculty, from staff, from government, uh, from everyone that's made this possible. And, uh, and there's certainly nothing I've done on my own. But a couple more things to say about the challenge here. Um, well, you know, when some of you were born, the province didn't have a medical school. In fact, when some of you were born, the province wasn't even a province. And <laughs> we've come a long way uh, since then. In a few months, we'll be celebrating the 50 years since the Faculty of Medicine was established. In a bold, in a, a bold innovative move, audacious, I can say, uh, by Dr. Ian Rusted and others like Dr. Max House, who's recognized in the mural here, uh, to really tenacious to establish this medical school, which is a real treasure for the province. At a time when most medical schools, and still are, in cities over a million people, the province doesn't even have a million people. And having a branch plant medical school would never have accomplished all the research, brought the research dollars in, or built the kind of doctors that we need for tomorrow here in the medical school that we're doing for the province. So I'd like to raise my hat to the founding dean, Dr. Ian Rusted. And over the years, you, the people of the province, have entrusted uh, Dr. Al Cox as dean, Dr. David Hawkins, Dr. Ian Bomer, and then myself to lead this faculty. And I'm delighted that we've now um, uh, entrusting Dr. Margaret Steele, who I know will be a, a great dean to follow, a, a cheery and practical person, good qualities for a dean. And I'm looking forward to handing the torch on to her. Well, what are we doing here? How do we prove this thing? Well, it's an interesting challenge we face today because healthcare has become ever more complex. People have lived longer, but have more complex illnesses that we're trying to solve and crack the code here. It was interesting talking to with the Honorable Jerry Byrne earlier here about the importance of the ARVC uh, cracking the genetic code for the sudden cardiac death thing and the impact that's made on people across the province. And most of you know people are impacted by that. We're talking at a time in the problems how we face economic realities and fiscal restraints, which makes our health care even more difficult and so important that we do the kind of research like we're doing with our TPMI project, part of the IBM, to try to look at how we can help physicians prescribe smarter and better. So we use less x-rays, yes, less x-rays, Peter, um, Peter Collins was our, our radiographer here, less x-rays, less tests, make sure we use them on the most important people. And what we really need to do is train our new generations of doctors to work together collaboratively with other healthcare people in this new environment that we have because we as doctors don't have all the answers and we need to work with the patients and with all the healthcare team to actually make things work. So that's our challenge and that's part of what our new curriculum that Noreen talked about is building our curriculum around the people of the province and so our students learn in context all over the province. In every community in the province we have students from time to time and many students in many places and then the simulation center that allows them to really hone their skills, and I'll talk about that a bit more. We built this fine building, but inside the building are the things that we need to do, and that's where our fundraising campaign comes into place, where we're all working to try to make sure we have the resources to do what we need to do to build a healthy tomorrow for the people in Newfoundland and Labrador. So the key things we're looking for for your help in this project is student support, simulation and technology, and research support. And I'll talk a bit more about that. We have actually 320 students here, or 80 students a class, and uh, 320 students over the four years, almost the same number of residents and um, research students. Now these students were selected because they really wanted to help other people, and that's the kind of people we select. And they try hard to get in here, some of them many times, and we're delighted their success getting in. They come from all socioeconomic backgrounds and we're different than a lot of the other medical schools that primarily take students in the top one or two income quintiles. Our students come almost evenly from five income quintiles out around the bay, in St. John's, in every part of the province. A third of our students come from rural backgrounds compared to 10% to 11% in all the other medical schools in Canada. So again, we tie what we do to the need to the province, 
But as economics becomes tighter, as we have to raise tuition fees and different things like that happening, that's where the support of our donors, our alumni and faculty, it's supporting our student support with more scholarships and bursaries, will enable those students who come from difficult socioeconomic backgrounds and financial resources to take that long journey to become a physician. Because some of these people, when they start practice for the first time, are 33 or 34 or 35, like it's that long a journey if you're a subspecialist. So that's one of the big things we're doing. One of the other things that we're really doing to try to make sure we build this healthy tomorrow is patient safety. And that's where simulation laboratory <coughs> comes into this. And simulations where we learn and practice in mannequins and standardized patients to learn skills over and over again. And let me just give you an example. I was forced in my career to deliver about 700, well, to help 750 women have babies. And you know what a joyful experience that is for most. But if things go wrong, they go dreadfully wrong in a hurry for both mother and baby. And they go wrong like that. And you have to be able to respond like that quickly and effectively. But if you've only seen that complication once in the last year, you can't unless you practiced it. And that's why simulation equipment is so important. Not just for obstetrics, for anesthesia, for the emergency department, for the operating room, for all sorts of things. So the simulation is the focal point of this building. I hope most of you have seen it. And one of the key things we're raising funds for is to make sure we have the ongoing equipment needed to address those kind of uh, emergencies. And just for an example, we're looking for a new birthing simulator. Noelle is her name, and she's getting old and tired, and it's time to replace her with a younger, newer model, right? And uh, she'll be able to deliver many more babies in the simulation center. So those are the kind of things. Noelle costs about $100,000. So that's the kind of thing we need for simulation. And then research. Well, research is so important to what we do here in the province, and our research here is not directed widely, but it's trying to focus on what the real needs of the province are. Everything from cardiac disease to genetic disease and things that are most affected by in our aging population here and our population has many challenges. Healthcare services, how to deliver the right drug or the right test to the right patient in the right place. And that's a struggle in a big, large, diverse province. So again, research is a focus on the needs of the people and that's where we're trying to really focus the third pillar of our, of our campaign. We're looking for our partners to support that kind of activity. And we've had some great success, like the sudden cardiac death gene we're focusing CART on. Now there is the colon cancer research right now, because that's a high incidence of genetic colon cancer in the world is right here in Newfoundland Labrador. So let's try to crack that code the same way as we can with the, some of the other things. So that's the three folks of our campaign, student support, simulation center, and research. And we've got lots of room to take uh, more support with partners on that way. But right now, we're here to celebrate what we've done so far. And I am absolutely so pleased that we can, at this point, announce as of today, we've raised $3.2 million in gifts and commitments towards our $5 million goal. So thanks to all of you who've contributed from either financial donations, donations in kind, helping with staff and support and working with people to do those things. That means an enormous amount to me as Dean and the entire medical school because that's how we can build a healthy tomorrow. And this is the corporations, foundations, the government has always been a strong supporter here and we work closely with them every day, Eastern Health, the university, but it's our funders, that the, donor, the donors that will make us able to really rise above the challenges of today and tomorrow to build that healthy tomorrow that we're all talking about today. So thank you everyone. It's been an enormous privilege for my wife and I to be here for the last 12 years. We've enjoyed being, um, be, enjoyed becoming NBC's Newfoundlanders by choice and uh, <laughs> we love living here and it's a great spot. We're so proud of what everybody's done and pulled together to accomplish here. So thank you very much everyone.